What's going on guys? This is Vinylic Puma, back with another Borderlands 1 Remastered video, and today I figured I could talk about Cromorax and more specifically what I would consider the best way or method to fight and farm him. But before we get into how to actually fight Cromorax, we should talk about what I would consider to be the proper prerequisites or some of the things you will need to take on Cromorax. Now, as far as this video is concerned, I'm not necessarily going to go over a specific build you should use, simply for the fact that the character that you're using may be different from the one I'm using here. However, there are a few recommendations I'll make as for what gear you should use, because this is possibly as, if not more important than your build slash character choice. During your fight with Cromorax, you're not going to want to have to worry about ammo, and thus, having a method of regenerating ammo is generally a good idea. This can usually be achieved through two methods, with the first being to rely on TDR legendaries, which will provide some ammo regeneration for their corresponding weapon type. However, a better method is to have an ammo regeneration class mod, as this will usually not only improve the capabilities of a specific weapon type, but will also allow for ammo regeneration for that specific ammo type. Each class has two of these, with Brick having the Bombardier and Ogre class mods, which favor launchers and shotguns respectively. Mordecai has the Gunslinger and Sniper class mods, which favor pistols, revolvers, and snipers. Lilith has the Mercenary and Spectre class mods, which favor SMGs and snipers respectively. And finally, Roland has the Commando, Marine, and Rifleman class mods, which favor shotguns, launchers, and combat rifles respectively. Ultimately, just try to pick one of these class mods for your character and make sure it does have ammo regeneration capabilities. Because if you can get that, that will really help out with the fight, as you won't have to worry about running out of ammo. From here, you're going to want to select your weapons. While it's recommended that all weapons you select have ammo regen compatibility with the class mod you've selected, so maybe if you pick brick and you want to use shotguns, you're going to have all four shotguns and all four weapon slots, it isn't 100% necessary to do this. What is important though is that you have one strong fire weapon, one strong shock weapon, one strong corrosive weapon, and one really powerful weapon that you're going to be using to take down Cromorax itself. The main purpose of the elemental weapons is to quickly take out the various mobs that will charge and attack you while trying to fight Cromorax itself. There are three different types of these enemies, with the green craw worms being susceptible to fire damage, the craw maggots being susceptible to shock damage, and finally, the armored craw worms being susceptible to corrosive damage. Of these three enemies, I'd say the craw maggots and green craw worms are the most dangerous as they tend to be the fastest and they hit pretty hard, but being able to dispatch all three enemies relatively easily with high quality elemental weapons will allow you to score necessary second wins or just fend off some of these enemies if they happen to get too close. If you can, try to get all of these elemental weapons to match the weapon type your class mod regenerates ammo for, but if you can't do that, just using really good weapons will usually suffice. This of course leaves us with our final equip slot, which is going to be the main weapon we actually use to defeat Cromorax. Typically, the best weapons to use for this purpose are weapons that either A, have high critical hit damage bonus, B, fire multiple projectiles per shot with high fire rate, or C, some combination of the two. These types of weapons tend to work best because Cromorax mainly takes damage through criticals to the various purple spots or joints across his body, and high crit damage weapons can usually burst Cromorax's joints pretty easily, while high projectile weapons can make hitting these individual joints much easier. This should leave you with a lot of options for weapons, as things like snipers, shotguns, masher revolvers, and anarchy SMGs can all be great choices for taking on Cromorax. I usually prefer multiple projectile weapons, since Cromorax has a low amount of health points for each of his joints. But if you're highly skilled with snipers, and you can perform pinpoint shots quickly and easily, you can usually one or two shot each joint. It's up to you, but if you want an easier time, stick with high projectile weapons, as like I said, the amount of HP each joint has isn't really high, the challenge is just hitting these joints in the first place relatively consistently to where they eventually break. From here, I suppose we could talk about grenades. 
Personally, I don't think transfusions are that great since there's the potential to outrun the range of the transfusion orb. However, if you are going to use a grenade, transfusions are better than pretty much everything else since they will provide some extra healing if you do need it. Just be sure to not outrun the range of those transfusion orbs. And actually, with that in mind, what I would recommend you do rather than using or totally relying on transfusion orbs is to try to get a skill on your character that allows for some passive health regeneration in some way. And if you do that, you can really increase your survivability. But as a quick recap for gear recommendations, recommend that you're going to want a class mod with some kind of ammo regeneration, one high quality fire, shock, and corrosive weapon, and one weapon that's primarily meant for taking down Chromorax itself. And if you want a transfusion grenade, I would recommend that as well. Now that you've got the proper weapons and gear you need to actually make this fight a bit easier, let's talk about how you actually deal damage to Chromorax in the first place. As I mentioned earlier when discussing gear, damage is dealt to Chromorax by firing at the orbs slash joints or purple spots that are across his body. There are two of these on his pincers, two of these on his legs, one of these that are part of his eye, and a final one that is located on his back. Dealing damage to any other part of Chromorax's body yields zero damage, and since these purple areas on Chromorax's body are usually hard to hit, this presents the main challenge in taking Chromorax down. For this reason, it's usually a good idea to keep your distance from Chromorax as this allows you more time to hit the purple spots and makes it harder for him to hit you. Additionally, players will use one of two different methods for taking on Chromorax, with the first being what I would call the glitch method, and the latter being what I would call the legit method. The glitch method involves exploiting flaws in Chromorax and the other craw-type mob enemies AI. What this usually involves is getting the player to run immediately to the left once you enter the arena, and if you time it right, you can get Chromorax locked in an animation where it constantly rears back and exposes its chest. From here, all you have to do is shoot the corresponding purple spots on his body, and you could deal tons of damage to Chromorax safely and easily. And this can lead to a pretty easy kill. While this method can be safer, it does present its own challenge in that it doesn't always work. And maybe it's just me, but this method seems to work less often in the remaster, as you'll notice from the gameplay I'm showing here in video, that this is the original PC version of Borderlands 1 and not the remaster. There's also a pretty good chance Chromorax doesn't get locked in the animation, and instead, Chromorax and or some of the other enemies will start firing projectiles at you, which can deal a ton of damage and put you in a fight for your life. At the very least, I'd recommend running to the left edge each time you fight Chromorax to see if you can get this animation to trigger. It usually doesn't work out like I've shown here, but you can sometimes get Chromorax to get locked in other animations, which cause him to face away from you and expose the purple spot on his back. If you can take this spot out early on, it makes the rest of the fight way easier since the other five purple spots on his body can be fairly easy to hit, since all of them are usually facing you. So, while I don't really recommend this method 100% of the time due to its unreliability, you should try to see if you can get it to activate each time you fight Chromorax, is it has the potential to make the fight a lot easier. As for our more legit method for taking on Chromorax, this mostly just involves fighting him while trying to keep him at a distance. This strategy mostly consists of trying to stay outside of Chromorax's attack range, while occasionally swapping to elemental weapons to fend off his minions. Once you feel like you're at a safe distance, just unload at Chromorax's purple spots to deal damage, and once he's uncomfortably close again, just run away to a further distance and then rinse and repeat. Now, the lesser difficulty you'll encounter during this fight is with a lot of Chromorax's minions. Like I mentioned before, your best method for dealing with each of these enemies is to have guns that match to their corresponding elemental weakness. Typically, I'd recommend prioritizing taking out the Craw Maggots first, as these enemies move really fast, and green Craw Worms can be a bit of a pain too. But really, as long as you keep your distance, the bigger and slower armored Craw Worms can be avoided. Though, if they get close, don't be afraid to take them out, as they can be a great way to get second wins. 
the main difficulty you'll have with this fight is trying to hit the purple spot that is on Cromorax's back. This spot is rarely facing the player, and with that in mind, I'd recommend trying to take this spot out first, as it can make the rest of the fight way easier. Like you saw earlier when I ran to the left to try to get Cromorax to glitch out, Cromorax's AI seems to like to get locked moving in a certain direction, where his back will occasionally be facing the player for a short period of time. What you should do is capitalize on this opportunity as it can make the fight a lot easier since all of the other five purple spots are at the front of his body. If this strategy doesn't work out, it's also worth noting that during the fight, the spot on his back can usually be targeted by strategically placing the pillars between you and Cromorax. Cromorax usually has to go around these pillars, and when he does so, he leaves the spot on his back partially exposed to attack. I really like the pillar with the hole in the middle, as the hole can be used to fire a few shots at Cromorax's back. And it's also worth noting that sometimes during the fight, Cromorax will just face away from you, and when this happens, this is the time to strike. As, again, if you can remove this spot on his back, it makes the rest of the fight way, way easier. In the end, it takes a little practice to get comfortable taking on Cromorax, but once you get the hang of it, you can usually take down Cromorax fairly easily. After all, many of the spots on the front of Cromorax's body are relatively easy to hit with the double anarchy SMG or shotgun, and with that in mind, it's really just a matter of maintaining your distance and whittling away at Cromorax's HP. And if you do it long enough, he'll eventually go down. Otherwise guys, I think that's about all there is to it. As I said earlier, proper preparation for this fight will make it way easier, and after that, it's really just a matter of being able to take out the spot on his back. And then the rest of the fight should go in your favor. While I'm mostly doing this with Mordecai and Lilith, as you're seeing from all of the gameplay, it stands to reason you can take on Cromorax effectively with both Brick and Roland too. Just remember to keep your distance and whittle away at him like I've said earlier, and he should go down. Also keep in mind that as you take down Cromorax more and more, you will eventually get better weapons as Cromorax is a great source of legendaries and even some of the pearlescents. So maybe the first time you take down Cromorax will be a little difficult, but as you do it more and more, you're going to have access to much better weapons for taking down Cromorax again, so the process becomes faster and faster as you go. Just keep at it if you're having trouble, and once you take Cromorax out a few times, again, you're going to have better and better weapons to beat him and take on the rest of the game. But as always, guys, thank you all for watching this video, and I think that's going to wrap up this video. I hope this video was informative for helping you to beat Cromorax if you're unfamiliar with how to do so, and if you liked this video, or if it helped you, feel free to leave a like on this video, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more videos, and as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.